So I just started the recording. Hello, everybody. Um, I can see all of you on the chatting uh, side. You can also you know, chat if you uh, have any questions. And then um, if it's interrupted, you can uh, briefly leave as well. And um, well, I'll give you opportunity to talk as well. Uh, I don't see any of you <laughs> on the video screen. <laughs> but um, if you want to show yourself, you can click the video button at the bottom. Um, and uh, let me now share my content, um, not, the, not the whiteboard. I can share my entire computer. Hold on, share application screen. Mm, your entire screen, I said share. Uh, hold on, let me see your entire screen. He said, uh, share. So now do you see my computer screen? Somehow it's very messy, uh, but this is uh, my computer um, screen. And then I see oh, almost 25 students joining in. And then what I wanted to explain to you is if you see at the bottom, do you see my mouse click? Um, you can see the video sign. Uh, microphone sign and then you can raise a hand then I can you know give you opportunity to talk um, and then the video camera you can click and oh, hold on let me click mine and then uh, it you know I usually say share video so you can see me and then uh, my screen so this is how I am going to proceed uh, with uh, with you uh, when we have uh, online live online session so let me quickly um, call attendance uh, this is a little messy but uh, bear with me so uh, I see everybody on the roster and then hold on quickly um, quick attendance so that I can go um, in the order hold on um, so Anastasia is here and then uh, how does it go uh, and it's your last name, right? <laughs> okay, so Anastasia is here. Jasmine Anderson, do I see Jasmine Anderson? Oh, so she just joined. And then Penelope, I think I saw her. And then Sarah, Sarah, I, I see Sarah. Akil is here. Mia J is here. Elizabeth, do I see Elizabeth Butler? Uh, maybe not, okay, absent, just temporarily. Brianna Castillo. Do I see Brianna? Oh, Brianna, yes. And then uh, Zhiling Chen, I see it. And then Stacy Cole, Stacy is not here. And then Jacob, I saw it. Sage Hoffman, yes. Emily Hong, yes. Hunter, do I see Hunter? Hunter, yes. And then Matthew, Matthew, yes. Zhixin Li, Zhixin, yes. Yi Ching Ma, yes. And then Karen Monsalve, Fushuan, I saw uh, I saw her. Professor, I'm here. Who? Stacy? Stacy Cole, I'm here. Stacy Cole? Yes, I'm here. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Didn't see you. Okay, and then Sumin Karen and then uh Leard Scott, yes. And then Mina Starcy, yes. Diago, I think I saw him. Vanessa, uh, Vanessa, Yushin Yang, yes. And then JJ, what happened to JJ? Um, well, anybody you know knows JJ? Can you uh, text her that we are live online? Uh, and then Elizabeth, Elizabeth is not here. Okay. Anyhow, so let me submit attendance. This is really good that everybody signed up now. So uh, I'll be brief what we are going to do in this live session. So usually I am going to show you, uh, so today's goal is how to proceed um, in this uh, online learning. Hold on, let me turn it off. Um, so if we go to, let me move this a little bit. Um, if we go to, course information on the Blackboard. I just uh, updated our uh, schedule. So uh, March 23, I am going to give you a little bit of lecture on Joseon Dynasty's Hanbo. And then I am giving you instructions for uh, the exam one. Exam one is about materials and techniques. 
So uh, we are going to review materials in unit one that we studied a long time ago. And then um, March 30th, we are going to meet. So my idea is you take the exam one over the weekend, and then I can grade or I can see the results. And then if you didn't finish it, you can finish Monday, March 30th by the end of the day. And then uh, uh, we are going to move uh, from March 30th uh, and we focus on Chinese fashion about three weeks. Um, and then, uh, but in between April 6th is a spring break. So after March 30th, we will have a one week break and then we are going to resume and we are going to finish the Chinese fashion and then we are going to the modern fashion. Did anybody want to jump in? I guess not. <laughs> okay, then, um, so uh, that, uh, yes, Anastasia? I just had a question. Did they change the dates of the spring break from what they used to be? No, they didn't change anything. You know, like, uh, you still have a one week break. Um, you know, some people had a discussion of uh, finishing up early, but, um, you know, you probably have your own plan, you know, like a tax returns or, you know, you want to help out with your family members. So we will follow um, the, the original spring break schedule. Okay. Anybody? Okay, I guess not. And you can always type in um, so that I can take a look uh, if you have like alert, you know, uh, or, you know, something that I am missing. Um, so that is um, the, the basic information. Uh, and then going back to uh, my content. Um, so if you click the content, um, and, and then uh, here, the Korean clothing, this is where we are studying. And then, um, so obviously, I am not going to plan uh, to lecture three flowers. Uh, I am going to walk you around and then, uh, you know, focus on the most important elements. And then you can go through the entire PowerPoint on your own. Um, and then if you, again, have any questions or concerns when we meet next time, you can uh, raise those uh, questions. So anyhow, here is Unit 3 Korean clothing. And then it has all the information. Um, so we had, for example, uh, guest lecturer, Dr. Minji Kim, remember? Um, and uh, I, will, I have to change the date. Um, and then her lecture note in, is included. And then today I am going to show you Joseon Korea, and then uh, Hanbok history. And then um, we are there, there are some more readings for the unit four, but you already read some essays on Palhe, you know, like a Korean uh, traditional. Uh, materials like hanji and then here are some more information uh, about how to create hanbo um, and you can download these images then it becomes a little bit larger um, so these are women's uh, hanbo um, this part is called chima this is called jogori and then uh, menswear like a baji and then jogori and then this vest is a modern invention um, so uh, we are going to talk about those modern inventions. And then this is really helpful. If you want to know how to construct handbook, these are all, well, actually, it's not less than 10 minutes. Some are 30 minutes long, especially women's jogori takes a long time to make. Uh, and so you can see how people construct um, the Korean uh, traditional clothing. And this one is a new handbook. Like you can use different fabrics and make it a little bit more longer, um, you know, following the style of um, like a Western, I guess, jacket sort of. Um, anyhow, so that's what uh, I uploaded. So uh, today's lecture is uh, Unit 4, uh, Joseon Korea and Hanbo. Um, so now I will show you um, the slide of handbook. Now you can see a full screen of it, right? Um, so handbook is a name for Korean, oh sorry, handbook is named for Korean traditional clothes. Um, and uh, this is from the Joseon dynasty. Uh, and then uh, so, uh, but the basic form of, uh, you know, the jacket and the bottom, like uh, we studied the jacket parts, right, like coming to the waist area and you have either skirt or pants each for men, women and men, um, that 
basic structure or what had been already adopted in ancient Gojoseon dynasty. That's what we studied during the Three Kingdoms period. But the style changes. Um, so that's what we are going to study in Joseon dynasty. Um, so uh, what is most important elements of the Joseon dynasty is people wear clothing on their social status, sex, like a gender, right, jobs. Um, and from from time to time, they choose a special handbook for sales. Uh, so this is a very important part. Um, on the street, if you ever walk in the street of the Joseon dynasty, you can immediately tell uh, who is Yangban. Yangban is a name for a noble class or the ordinary citizens or who are slaves. You can see immediately, uh, you know, the way they dressed. Um, and then where are the jobs? So, for example, if you are a military officer, definitely you have your own uniforms. And if you are a civil officer, people can also see that you are a civil officer. And then uh, in terms of, you know, even genders, you can see, you know, who's married, who's, who's not. Uh, for example, men, if you have a top knot on the, in the top of the, your head, then you are married. And most people got married after 14, 15 years old, if they are well to do, and then they have a long braided hair at the bottom, then they are not married. You, you will see um, those examples later. So, um, you know, usually when we study Hanbok dresses during the Joseon dynasty, we um, categorize them for men, women, like a royal court, government officials, and children. But these are uh, common categories, especially for the museum's sake. Um, and then, um, so we had, again, this is important. So Joseon dynasty, as, as, as well as in Three Kingdoms period, government has regulations. These are written uh, legal records on what to wear, you know, like a, what, you sh what, what color you have to use, the shape of Hanbok. And then if somebody, um, how can I say, impersonate or pretends to be someone other than himself or herself, then there is reason for you to be punished. Uh, there are some stories like that in the novel. So this is a painting uh, by Shin Yun Bok, um, and it's called Admire in the Spring in the Country, where well, it's actually around this time of the year, right? Do you see like a small flowers in the, in the background? So springtime, this group of people went to picnic. And according to this picture, do you recognize uh, for example, men of high social status. Can you recognize them? Well, I would say the men seated in the background, like there are two of them, right? They have a really voluminous sleeves, right? And then long brims of their uh, head. This is called the cut, G-O-T, cut. And then um, you can see um, they have a colorful, like a sashes, right? And then um, they sit comfortably. And then uh, also having um, sort of dignified beard is also a sign of their high social status. Um, and then um, men seated on the other side. You see these musical instrument players? Um, they are uh, from a, a, a low social class uh, that is called Jung In, like a Jung In, J O O I N G. And then uh, hyphen I N Jung In. Jung In means middle class people, but um, they are technocrats. They are the ones who have skills. So artists, for example, we are the painters at the royal court. We belong to the Jung In class. Uh, musical instrument players also Jung In, uh, and then accountants, right? Like uh, people who with you know work with the numbers are also Jung In people. But anyhow, uh, so if you see their clothes. Uh, they have the same composition of cut and then the white uh, long robe, right? Underneath, you are going to see that jacket and pant called the chogori and paji that we've seen from the Three Kingdoms period. What's important is um, their sleeves are not as voluminous as those in the Yangban class. Do you see the differences? Um, and then uh, their cut, of course, it's a cut, but it's not as, as wide as the cut of Yangban. And it's not as high as those. Um, and then uh, obviously you can see accessories. Uh, and um, you know, in from the picture, these are two different types of robes. So uh, what this uh, Yangban has on is called the topo, T 
P-O-P-O. And then these men, like a Jungin class, you can see that there is a side slit, right? And um, it's rather tight. Um, and then uh, this is called the Jungchi mark. You don't have to know the name, but there is certainly a different type of garment. So people can recognize who's the young one or not. And then you see these ladies with a blue skirt in the background. And can you recognize what she is doing with a long stick over here? Anybody? The same thing is here. So this is tobacco pipe. <laughs> Back in Joseon Dynasty, it was a stylish thing to like smoke. Um, and it, you, you put the tobacco powders right here, small piece, uh, like a, you know, smoke with this big, a long stick. Anyhow, so the women you see over here, these are not somebody's wives. They are not wives of these men. They are called kiseng, G-I-S-A-E-N-G, kiseng. So they are professional entertainers. Um, so uh, they are the kind of companions that these young uh, gentlemen can take out uh, on an outdoor picnic. So uh, she, most likely these women will sing with a tune by these music musicians um, and then, um, and then uh, entertain the guests. Um, and maybe pour wine, you can see the wine is on the way. And also, do you see the differences in clothes between this uh, like a housemaid and the kiseng? So kiseng is a professional entertainers. And like a geisha in Japanese culture, they are entitled to have the most lavish clothes. Uh, and then um, the slave, not, not servant, um, she has rather humble clothes and jacket is tight. Um, so uh, this is example, surviving example of uh, Joseon Dynasty uh, clothes. Uh, so maybe late Joseon or early 20th century. So chima, chima, and jagori. And then this is dopo. Uh, so do you see the sleeves are really wide and large? Um, so if you put the arm, down, then all of this area is going to be um, draperies. So this is a sign of uh, uh, high social status. Um, so yangban is a very important word that you are going to see throughout the um, slide. So they are uh, like a leading social class. Uh, and they can take um, government state test and become either military or civil officers. Um, so here, the clothes that they have on here, the white robe with the black sashes, uh, this is called shim -ui. You are going to see the name at the end of the slideshow. Um, and this is a typical uh, ceremonial or daily clothes for Confucian scholars. So this one tell us that they are scholars of Joseon Dynasty. So remember the kiseng, the word kiseng. Um, so uh, like geisha in Japanese culture, they can wear the most lavish kind of clothes. And this particular painting is attributed um, to Yun Du Sa, a 16th century Korean painter. Um, and um, so the jacket was rather tight and short. So uh, during the Joseon Dynasty, you will see the the length of a uh, jacket, like the length of chogori will change. Only Joseon Dynasty, it is long, almost like our bolero jacket. And then it gets uh, smaller and smaller. And if you go, uh, you know, 18th century, it becomes almost like what a tight shrug type of thing. Um, and then you have a voluminous skirt. And this is called um, sangbak ha hu in ch Chinese characters, meaning uh, upper clothes tight and tight and short, and then the, the lower got voluminous and big. So that's sort of, a, um, how can I say, Asian uh, ceramic wear, you know, like a large, like a you know, bowl or vessel. Uh, that's the kind of um, silhouette that they wanted to create. And then do you see this big hair that she has? So these are uh, other people's hair. <laughs> If you can, you can imagine that you can, you know, grow your hair long and then make a little bit, um, you know, this size. But um, it's not possible. You can have that much hair. So uh, people buy other people's hair and then make this cord. It's called a kache. Kache literally means fake hair. Um, you know, kind of weak. Um, so it was very expensive. And you can see that she has 
uh, a beautiful wing. Um, so these are components of humble. Um, so here, I really want you to pay attention to different words, like durumagi, uh, right, the outer coat, and then tapo, tapo is here, um, and then topo, uh, topo and durumagi are uh, almost the same, uh, and durumagi is more like a modernized version of topo. So topo is the most lavish clothes for ordinary men, like a young bad man. Um, and then baji, right? You have baji, so you have a waistband and you have a uh, ankle band. Otherwise, baji is loose and big, so it slips down. Uh, and peja is a kind of a vest. You wear it in the winter time, and then chokbori. So, uh, and then chon. Do you see this one called chonbok? Chonbok is long vest. Usually, boys wear the chonbok because topo is obviously too lavish and use a lot of cloth and jambok is a similar look right you have a long uh, robe, robe coming down but you don't have sleeves so it was easier to wear and then uh, finally you have this uh, jokki and magoja these are uh, the modernized hanbok uh, so these days men will wear uh, baji and oh sorry baji and jokori like a top and bottom and then they will wear um, choki and then magoja, so that's it. Uh, but that's not the full uh, garment for outdoor. It. In order to make a complete look, these days you can order turumagi. Turumagi is expensive because it uses a lot of garment. And then traditional times you will wear these set at home. Usually at, at home you, you may wear jumbo. Uh, still you see guests and then when you go out you will wear the topo on the top so for men and the women we just saw jogori and hanbok and then uh uh women also had um uh, vest uh and then turumagi like again uh, we wear turumagi on the top um but traditionally when women go uh outside the house they are not supposed to show their face um, so they, they put on this uh, suge chima. Do you see the suge chima? So it's just, just a chima, but this has a little bit higher um, like the waist area, so that this goes around your face. It's almost like a hijab, right? Like you are going to put it around your head so that you don't show face to a strangers. Or you can wear chango um, on the top of your head instead of wearing it so you can hide your face or when you ride a, um, uh, what's the name of it? Uh, what's the, a pelican, you know, when you ride a uh, carriages, um, you can wear this and then sit inside. So uh, for, for both slides, I want you to remember these, these names, okay? I think it's possible. Um, so King's clothing, I'm going to skip a little bit. Kings had different types of clothing. Um, and then uh, these are more names of, you know, king's uh, clothes name. Like uh, Iksangwan is the head head piece. And then you had Hongnyongpo, uh, uh, like a red dragon robe. And then Okte uh, means like a jade dash, like a waistband. And then you had uh, shoes, Hua means uh, long necked leather shoes. Uh, and then po uh, is an outer coat, like a po, like a, you know, hong yong po, like a po means outer coat. Um, so these were the names of royal robe. And then, so one rank below, like if you are either civil officer or military officer, you have to wear this robe to enter the government. When he goes home, he will change to his ordinary clothes, like a topo in a baji jogori. But when he goes to the court, he has to put on something. It's like a three-piece suit to go to work. Um, so he has this uh, hat, like a pan, right? And then uh, he has his robe. And this is important that robe has round neck, round neck. Uh, I don't want to inundate you with a lot of terms, but um, the round neck is called, used to call the dalyong, like a round neck robe. Um, so the point is you wear the round neck robe, um, usually in dark colors. Um, and then this is very important. It's called the rank badge. Uh, if you have a note, then you can write down rank badge. 
it's like a military officer. You can see that who is a general, who is a major, right? Uh, usually they have that uh, language on the shoulders. But in Joseon Dynasty, as well as the Ming Dynasty in China, they wore rank badge on the chest. It's pretty large. It's like uh, uh, about you know covering the entire chest part of it. I guess it's about at least 12 inches by 12 inches. Um, so you know the crane means you are civil officers, but if you are a military officer, you are going to see four-legged animals. Like uh, I don't have. I mean, I will have a slide a bit later, but uh, it has like a tiger. You know, like those kind of four-legged animals. So, um, if you have a double crane, your rank is really high. So the whole purpose is people can recognize what you are. Uh, what you are. Uh, rank is. So these are all high rank government officials. And as you, as you can see, their portraiture was made, meaning they were very important people. Um, so rank badges is made of, uh, yeah, the rank, rank badges are made of embroidery. Uh, so the king had a different types of robes. You can uh, read more about it. I'm going to skip it a little bit down. See, do you see like here the double, uh, Double crane is very high in his rank. Um, and then, uh, hold on, let me just, uh, before I go here, let me end the show. Uh, and then I want to see you briefly. Uh, hold on, uh, how do I do this? Share content. Uh, hold on, how do I go? Ah, stop sharing. OK, so do you have any questions? Or, uh, yes, Anastasia? So in the picture you showed before of the men sitting around with the um, women who are entertaining them, mm -hmm. I know that their rug was also smaller. Does that another sign of status? Like the mat they were sitting on looks like probably half of the size of the other higher officials with like big... Uh, okay. That is a very good point. Let me just go back. Uh, start. I started sharing content. We're done. Share content. Mm. Ah, share content. Okay. We're done. This one. So the question was like, the size of mat. I, was, I think it's more, yes, uh, social status and also convenience, I guess. But yes, uh, the, the old, you know, Yangban people are seated in a really large mat. And by the way, these mats are made of straws. Remember straws that we studied the first class? You can make a raincoat <laughs> kind of thing. Um, and then do you see this uh, you know, ornament behind them? It's like a looks like a, a cushion or a pillow, right? Um, this is made of bamboo stalks. So inside is hollow. So as you reach like a warmer, like a water throughout the summer, um, you can lean on it or you can grab it. It's it's long like a long pillow, you can grab it when you go to bed. So that ventilation is really good and you know, you feel uh, nice. So this is called bamboo wife. <laughs> it, it's not your wife, <laughs> it's made of bamboo. So it's called bamboo wife. Uh, Chukbuin is the name. And then um, we, we have uh, some literature written on this. So people are going to embrace it or, or hug it when they go to bed, like a teddy bear kind of thing. But summertime teddy bear. Anyhow, that was an interesting question. Yes, so it certainly shows the social status as well. Anybody else? Well, I guess everybody's happy and all understanding uh, what I am saying. Is there Elizabeth? Okay, no Elizabeth. Uh, and then uh, who was not there last time? Well, I can find out later on. Anyhow, um, so, so far so good. Um, and then let me then share my... Uh, uh, yeah, let me share my content one more time. It's already 9.40, um, so that uh, I will go through, through the second half of my slide presentation. So hold on. Uh, we went through, uh, so queen's dress, of course. 
In terms of uh, surviving garments of the Joseon dynasty, you can imagine uh, Joseon queen's dresses are you know, one of the uh, most uh, embellished and ornamental. Um, so again, um, when you go to um, the court, uh, that garments women in the and living in the palace, um, they also have rank. Um, obviously, there is a uh, queen, the legitimate wife of uh, the king at the time, but king always had two, three other wives as well, right? They are called mm -hmm. concubines, and depending on their social status, whether they had a boar or son or not, there is also a rank below queen. And then uh, there are princesses and royal concubines, and also princesses born out of concubines, their rank is lower than the legitimate princess, you can imagine. But uh, right under the queen, you can also see the crown prince's wife, right? Like a dauphin's wife. Um, that is very high in rank because they she is going to be the next queen. Then you have women also wore their attire based on their uh, rank. And then, um, so, uh, uh, like a hwal ot is the name that you are going to remember. So hwal ot is this clause, uh, and you can finish reading um, the the you know the, the all of it. So originally, uh, hwal ot uh, has a beautiful embroidery or wishing longevity, luck, and wealth. You notice the examples. Um, and in the in the early Joseon dynasty, uh, and then up to the Imjin War, they had this hwal ot borrowed for once in a lifetime for ordinary people. That is the wedding day. Uh, but then uh, after the engine war, even Harod was rare to get. So they are going to use no one sum. It means like a green one sum, and you're going to see it in a moment. So this is Harod. So if you wear this beautiful robe uh, embroidered with usually butterflies and peonies and other symbols of longevity, you will have this kind of look. You see, again, sleeves are really long and lavish so that your hands are not shown. Um, and then it falls all the way to the knees. And underneath this paro, of course, you have the jogori and chima. Um, and, so, and then you also wear a ceremonial headpiece like this, and then the pina, like this long um, stick, uh, is a sign of a married woman. If you are not married, you won't have this uh, knot, you just have a long braided hair coming down. Um, so this is a ceremonial dress for the royal, meaning it's not every single day, it's not when they eat breakfast or dinner. Right? It's only when, let's say, uh, the queen's birthday is coming up and you are invited to her birthday party. So that's one ceremony. So you will wear this based on your own rank and then you will go to this ceremony. Uh, or let's say there is uh, another important ceremony. Let's say crown prince was born, right? You have a birthday party for him. Then you will wear this and go to that kind of party. But not ordinary days. Like most of the days you will wear Tang Yi. I'm going to show you Tang Yi a little bit later. So Palod is the one really lavish with all kinds of uh, embroideries and one sum is a little bit less. It's still long sleeve. Uh, it has some decorations like a, a gold foils, but uh, it does not have a full uh, embroideries. So that's one sum. Uh, so this is the no one sum, uh, no one sum. You can see the difference between harot, harot embroideries, red, and then no one sum means uh, green. So you will wear this. So based on the color, Huang Wan Sam means gold one sum dress. Hong Wan Sam is red one sum dress, usually by the queen. No one sum is worn by the princesses. So for uh, ordinary people to get married, obviously you go to the lowest rank, that is no one sum, meaning green one sum. Um, so these are other illustrations showing us the one sum. Uh, and then these are other modern variations. So, uh, so ordinary days, if you live in the court, you are queen, princesses, concubines, or you know, some sort of royal family members, then you will wear this for your daily robe. When you go uh, morning, you know, like when you 
say morning greetings to the king or to grandmother, you will wear this. You are going to eat breakfast, uh, or you will read a book, or you are also going to do embroidery, you will do some work. Uh, and then let's say, well, today is the birthday of somebody, then you will wear this and go to the birthday parties. Um, these are all like a small figurines that people make. Um, and then uh, I want to explain a little bit about this, this one. Do you see like a rabbit ear? <laughs> here? Um, so this is made of wood. So you wear it on top of your, your hair. Oh, sorry. And this is called the kunmari. Kunmari means gigantic headpiece. So uh, this is uh, called ayamari. Uh, um, and then tuguji. Uh, the guji is the the, um, the wooden piece over here. So this is the highest form of headpiece. Uh, so depending on your headpiece, we can also tell that uh, who uh, you know what occasion that is. See, like here, this is their normal hair. When you wear haro, you have up to this headpiece. Or sometimes you can have more hair. It's also kate. You can wear. Uh, sort of a halo around your own head, like a, around this, you will have this artificial hair, like somebody else's hair. But if it's the wedding ceremony, do you see a little bit of rabbit ear, like a wedding ceremonies, or let's say an envoy from China arrived, you know, for those kind of, uh, you know, occasions or enthronement ceremony, right? Like a, you are, your husband is going to be uh, enthroned in you know, those major ceremonies, you will you are going to have this piece, tuguji. Like you you put this piece on top of round artificial hair, so that becomes a ceremonial uh, headpiece. Pinya is a common uh, head hair accessories. Um, so uh, I want you to read the rest of it, like embroidery techniques. Uh, this is actually the mat made of the. Uh, the sedge and uh, wreath, uh, sort of a straw material. But if you weave really well, you can make pictures out of it, longevity. Um, so these are more examples of length badges. Oh, so this is the for military officer. Do you see the left part? How scary that is? <laughs> you can put uh, two of them, then really high rank badge. Uh, like here, yes, tiger and leopard two. Um, two cranes. Um, so uh, the halo, we have pieces of embroidery saved, not the entire robe. Um, there are other accessories you can wear. Um, a lot of people know bujagi. So bujagi is a byproduct after you make hanbo. If you have any scraps of fabric after you make a clothes, you save it and create this kind of uh, large cloth. Large means like 20 inches by 20 inches or large. So you either use it to cover your food table or um, to wrap things, to wrap a gift. Um, see like how wonderful this geometric pattern is. Uh, you don't plan this ahead of time. Like whenever you have a scrap, you lay it out and try to make a square out of it. Um, so these are more examples. Um, so this we will repeat in the modern times. Um, so this is modern creation. Do you see like a, a, a designer, Han Song Su created that that haro, the bridal robe, uh, with um, you know like a, a, her own techniques of embroidery. Uh, so anyhow, that's one thing. Uh, but what I wanted to show you is another slide of Joseon Dynasty. Um, uh, hold on, but oh. Um, so again, you know, you have to know these basic terms, like hanbok is a general term of traditional clothing, chima, jogori, baji, and then remember po or dopo means a large overcoat, and then cut men's hair, and then sek dong ot, like it's uh, here, sek dong ot means children's clothes with rainbow patchwork. I'll show you an example. And then Kwanbok is official robe with rank badge, remember? And then rank badges called Hyungbae. And oh, and then uh, Dang Ui. So Dang Ui is a daily over jacket. Remember, it comes down to a sort of waist, a little bit hanging like a part. Um, and then you wear Bonsam and Harot for high ceremonies, right? At the court, 
not the ordinary people at the court, but let's say uh, my daughter got married to the king. So I myself is not the royal family, right? Uh, but I want to visit my daughter who's living at the court. Then I will wear tangi, sort of a ceremonial, not ceremonial, sort of a uh, respectful form of clothes in order to go into the court and see my daughter. But I am not going to wear tangi in my own house for daily purposes, right? If I keep doing it, somebody will report me, <laughs> and then that's sort of I'm, I'm violating the uh, what, the regulations that's only at the court for people in the court, you know. Uh, so these are uh, historical examples of topo. You see how large the topo is. Do you see the woman? She can get in, right? Like a, it will drag to the floor and what's really important is the sleeve part. So this is extravagant luxury. You need, I mean, you spend extra clothes to, you know, cloth in order to make this uh, voluminous sleeves. So on the street, you can imagine people wear tight sleeve, right? Lower class. And then you will see like these people with big sleeves, you know, like a sort of a graceful silhouette. Um, so the one that you are looking in the museum is uh, King Yongjo Dopo. Uh, he had it created and then um, he, he gave it to a Buddhist temple um, as his way of showing tribute. Um, so you, you tie inside and then you tie outside. Remember like a uim, like a, you know, clothes are worn toward your right side, remember? Uh, and then you see the lines are transparent, right? Cloth is it's made of silk. That's why you have this wave like a patterns, but it's totally transparent. Um, and this particular um, sewing stitch is called getki. You may see it a little bit in the slide, getki. So for summer clothes, because it's a see-through, uh, they have this really, really minuscule stitches. There are no seams on either side. Uh, and then you create this. It's a beautiful piece. Uh, how do we know it's King Yongjo? Because it's written here, um, sort of a dedication piece. So uh, we know that it was made in 1740 and before. Uh, so this long robe is called the Jeonbo. Do you see Jeonbo that we saw in the picture? So Jeonbo. Sometimes you can wear Jeonbo on top of Durumagi. Sometimes you can wear Jeonbo just on top of that uh, Jogori and Pai. So a lot of unmarried men who are uh, even um, court officials uh, like who is staying home, they would wear this jumbo. It is very comfortable clothes, not comfortable. Uh, it's, it's, how can I say? It's uh, formal enough, but it doesn't have that, you know, like a topo's big sleeves. So it's, uh, it's pretty practical, beautiful clothes. Um, and then this is Jungchima. Remember the musical uh, instrument player, the musicians in the first scene? Um, so that is a chima. So this one, uh, like here, front, and then the back, there is no side clothes. It's like opened. Uh, how can, it's like apron kind of opened. So top and then the bottom. So uh, it's very comfortable for you to move around. And then sleeve is long, but it's not like that topo sleeve that you've seen like, you know, hanging all the way. Uh, so chimak, chimak. See, this is chimak that I mentioned. Chimak. Anyhow, this is a summary of Joseon Dynasty's changing silhouette. So uh, in the early Joseon Dynasty, it's almost like a Three Kingdoms period. Remember, like the jacket is long enough coming to the waist, and then that full skirt. Uh, and then if you go to the 17th century, it comes to the waist, and then the, you know, the skirt is worn around your waist. And if you go to 18th century, um, going, it's more like an empire waist style. It goes right around your chest. And then the jacket is coming down. But in pictures, it's even shorter, especially for Kiseng. Um, and then 19th century, if you see uh, black and white photographs, you are going to see this kind of picture. Somehow, the waist part is really long, covering up to your armpit, right? Um, and then the, the jogori is really tight and short. Uh, so I'm going to skip it. You can read more about it, you know, like this dokduri. Uh, 
And then this is again a remaining example of that one sum, the Hong one sum, the red one sum. Uh, and how do we know this is for the royal family? Because of this gold foliage. These are stamping with gold foils. Uh, and then no one sum, right? So these are examples uh, when we create uh, old uh, clothes for the television dramas or historical shows. And then unlike the po, their closing is just in the middle, right? Do you see like just in the middle? It doesn't overlap. These are also important characteristics. Um, I don't know whether I've mentioned before, but in Korean clothing, uh, also similar in Japanese and Chinese clothing as well, but because of feng shui or like a, you know, the principles of five major colors for liner, do you see the lining? So the surface is green, but on the lining part, right, like underneath, usually they wear uh, complementary colors. So in these colors, in the liner, we put red and blue, right? You can see throughout, or this uh, clothes as well. Like the surface is a green jacket, again, for the royal family, but then the liner is red, complementary colors. These are important details. And then the skirt is extremely voluminous. So for high status woman, you use more fabrics with a lot of gathering um, pleats over here. Uh, and then for lower class, you can see that you only need this much to make chima skirt. Uh, so this is an example showing you uh, in order to be a court lady in Joseon, you need a proper underwear. And it shows how many pieces of underwear you need. So if you are Kiseng, you can wear up to here. But if you are the royal court lady, you need a few more layers of our skirts. So you need this kind of big uh, underwear skirt in order to have uh, volumes for this big skirt called a uh, gilded frill skirt, blue skirt with a gilded frill. This one, um, you need some uh, like a bell-shaped uh, silhouette. So you need this type of uh, three-layer, sometimes five-layered uh, underskirt, and then one more. Uh, they say you they use bit of hanji at the edges, just like a um, European-style bell skirt uh, uh, under underskirt. Uh, remember, children. Uh, so this is the chonbo. That we just saw, like, you know, best type of jeonbok. Uh, but for children, you wear like a small jeonbok. And then this is just hectong. Do you see the rainbow uh, patchwork? Each strip is uh, stitched together. So obviously, it's a lot more work. But it also shows that um, the value and uh, what the preciousness of a child into this clothes. You know, somebody will make this uh, with a great care and attention, right? And then. All these letters means longevity and then, you know, the mountains and forever and, you know, long life, those kind of auspicious letters. So this was a, a princess when she was a young girl. And then this is a ceremonial uh, clothes for a boy's first birthday. Uh, so we, we've talked mainly about uh, upper class people, right? So uh, if you think about lower class uh, people, we have these um, turn of the 20th century photographs. And obviously, uh, a boy uh, have jogori and baji. Or do you see this man? Like he has jogori and baji. He is going outside, so he put the cart, but he does not have a topo, sorry. He does not have a topo. So dopo completely change your silhouette, right? Like whether you have overcoat or not, uh, also tells us, you know, your social status. Or sometimes you can see the boy, he is overgrown out of his clothes. He needs a bigger clothes, right? Uh, or here, boys, and then maybe father and other, you know, people, they're workers, so they have this type of clothes. Um, and then um, these are a little bit social elite. Do you see the difference between this group of workers, like a uh, water carriers, and then this group of a little bit social elite? So uh, in order to go outside, on top of this, you have a uh, turumagi, right? Like a topo, and then cut. 
uh, and then uh, we may study this later again, uh, but uh, in the late 20, uh, late 19th and early 20th century, uh, Asian royal families are going to adopt European clothes. So we are going to talk about this in the modern period. Uh, I wrote a book on this. Uh, I will share it with you. They look like a German or British aristocrats, right? So that was the whole idea. Uh, this one is very interesting example. We've studied this, right, um, at the um, at the uh, Metropolitan Museum. Read more about it. Uh, and these days we have this cultural heritage project, so that uh, ladies, uh, this woman is uh, intangible cultural heritage. She she still lives alone. Uh, she's still alive. So they demonstrate how to make cloth a traditional way. This is a Raimi demonstration. Um, you can read more about this old couture. Um, it's really very interesting, like how to use hanbok silhouettes to make uh, new clothes, so inspiration, and then the product. Uh, and then this is uh, the clothes called Shim Ui. Shim Ui. And it's called the Shen Yi, uh, so it's a Confucian scholar's clothes. Uh, it is really ancient. Uh, this comes from the uh, the, the Kong, Kong Confucius period, meaning fifth century BCE. And uh, this type of clothes never changes. This is a Chinese example, and this is a Korean example called Shen Yi. The same character, uh, but if you read it Chinese way, it's called the Shen Yi, but in Korean, it's called the Shim Ui, and you need this uh, black headpiece. So that's it, I think. Uh, so uh, yeah, that's it. And then now I want to talk a little bit about our exam. Uh, and yeah, before I go to the exam, hold on. How do I stop sharing? OK, stop sharing. Do you have any question? Somebody wants to raise hand? Uh, Anastasia? So you mentioned the color green before. Could you just reiterate why, like what it, what status occurred or why it was different again? Uh, are you talking about the color blue? No, green. You said something about um, uh, you wore green for a specific reason if you were a royalty or a commoner. Ah, the, oh yeah, yeah. So it's called the no one sam, like a green one sam. Uh, so that clothes is for princesses at the court, right? So a uh, queen or like a grandmother, right? Like a king's mother, you know, those high status people, they don't wear green. Green is a color of uh, sort of young people, young, uh, just married or, you know, still unmarried. You know, green is a color of springtime, right? So. Uh, Green is the color of uh, royal princesses. Uh, and then that particular green wonsam is also used as a wedding gown for ordinary women during the Joseon dynasty. Is it clear, Anastasia? OK, so um, you can uh, read more of my slideshow. And then now I want to talk about the exam, OK? So now uh, let me share the content again. Uh, hold on, how do I share the content? Okay. Share content and then my blackboard, uh, this I will share. Mm, sorry, I, went, I will go into uh, the blackboard, hold on. Mm. So, the exam is based on, do you see the unit one introduction? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, so here you have a unit one, East Asian costume history, and then unit two, materials, materials and East Asian costumes. So here uh, in the exam one, you will see um, basic uh, historical, historical period. Um, so historical period means, let me go to my own, uh, slideshow, and then the U1, mm, yeah, what is the U1? 
intro, introduction of East Asian costume history. Um, so we are studying three periods, I mean, three countries, China, Korea, Japan. Uh, China, Korea, and Japan is somewhere here. Um, so I think you should, oh, takes a little while. Oh, you should know the uh, main historical development. Uh, and then uh, here, the material culture, right? Like uh, what type of materials were used for um, clothing? Uh, some of them are not necessarily clothing materials that you will think, like a paper. You need metals and you need leather, fur. Uh, and we, we talked, uh, you know, about these materials for a long time um, so that uh, you should be able to name all these materials and then sort of uh, think about, you know, oh, well, you know, when was felt used or when was the fur used? What about the jade and wood um, and those kind of formation? Um, and then somewhere here, um, these are important ideas that we discussed that overall in East Asian culture, because it's a pre-modern society, you don't wear uh any clothes you like to wear right like you don't choose clothes because yellow is your own color i mean if you wear yellow or golden color without any permission then uh, again it's uh it's, uh it's a crime right in the chinese period yellow or golden color is only preserved for the emperor uh and as we've read in confucian analects you always wear modest clothes suitable for your own social standing so i want you to uh remember those basic attitude about the clothes uh so this is what we discussed in the first uh class and then the second one was uh more in depth uh in terms of materials and techniques so uh, you should understand what silk is made of it's based on animal in a way right um so we talked a lot about the production of silk and then hemp and rain is based on the plant um and then some countries use bananas or alum bark uh, cotton is, in fact, a bit introduced later. It's not from the ancient period. Um, so, for example, if I ask a multiple choice question, such as which material was not used in Han Dynasty, and then I will say number one, fur, number two, cotton, number three, silk, number four, wood, then you would choose cotton, because cotton was not used in the Han Dynasty. Um, that ancient period of the second century CE. And then straw, right? This is interesting materials. Uh, again, their food production and consumption is closely tied to uh, clothing material as well. Um, so straws, mulberry trees too. Um, and then the felt. Out of all these, one of the old, I mean, one of the oldest material is actually fur and felt because it's from the Paleolithic period. You can imagine when you have a hunting and gathering economy, you just get animals and use it, right? Instead of cultivating uh, plants. Uh, cultivating plants starts like rainy and hemp, maybe 4,000 BCE. Um, it's uh, equivalent to Bronze Age, but you can imagine from the Neolithic period, people had the plants uh, as a clothing materials. <laughs> Uh, and then the looms, uh, and then this one, right? Significance of colors, five major colors. Uh, and then right direction is very important, right? Um, right direction of the clothing is important. Uh, I think that's it. Um, so in exam one, uh, there are 10 questions, but it is a mixture of um, multiple choice, uh, and like a true or false kind of questions. So hold on. Um, if you open exams, you will have a techniques and it will be open later. Um, and then let's see, if you opened it, it will say that 
test that has a limit of one hour. It's a 10 questions. You can easily finish within 20 minutes. Um, and then uh, test will automatically save. Uh, and then you have to finish it in one city. Uh, well, I allow two attempts, but it's only because you may get into, uh, how do you call it? You may get into technical difficulties, not that you should take it twice, right? I can see what you did. Uh, I can see all the all the results uh, in the system. So once you open, start it, then you cannot go back. You have to take it. Um, so that's why you save time, you know, like a good Wi-Fi connection and keep yourself at least like an hour and then you can take it. Um, so uh, 10 questions. And then most of them are multiple choice. You choose like a number two or three. And then uh, you are going to uh, say true or false. For example, I can say, Raimi is made out of silkworms. True or false? Well, that is false, right? Um, so those kind of things. Um, so I'm going to stop. And then I will ask you, uh, hold on, let me see, just do you one. Uh, you need one more time just to give you an information. So it, it is a good time that after I talk to you, uh, you sit down um, and then review um, this unit one, especially uh, unit one uh, East Asian uh, costume history uh, and the materials. And then chronology is very important. You see the chronology. I want you to remember you know, dynasties in the order, because uh, in one of the questions, you will be asked to organize these dynasties in the order. So you already studied Japan and Korea, so you should be able to uh, organize them in the order, right? And then China, you should start. So download this chronology and spend about 30 minutes to memorize it. Um, it's ordering, like you will have a, like a word bank, and then you have to we organize them in the order of historical uh, period. Okay, uh, so now I stopped sharing. And do you have any question? Anybody? Uh, Sarah? I had a question. So are we doing multiple tests? Are those like older? Those are going ah, to be for different so this weekend, you are only going to take uh, techniques and materials, the exam one. There are 10 questions. And I think not, like, one question is uh, organize a Japanese historical dynasty, right? And then second question is organize uh, Korean dynasties. And then another question will be organize Chinese dynasties. And then you will have uh, seven questions remaining, and those are like, a, you know, what is the most suitable material in order to make royal clothing, right, for the emperor or something. Then there are examples, and you will choose silk. Uh, and, and then there are some true and false questions. Um, so we're only taking the materials and culture. Yes, okay. yes. And then next time, I'll give you time. I mean, you know, I will announce ahead. And then you will take that exam two on Japanese and Korean. And then you will take exam on Chinese. Sounds good? Yep, thank you. OK, anybody else? So is there anybody who moved out of the country? Or are you all in New York City? I mean, not, not New York City, but in, in the US? Um, so I just want to you know, share my thoughts with you. Uh, so Akil said, take the test over the course this week. Uh, yes, you can take the test anytime from now until the until over the weekend. Um, so uh, yeah, I, I see you're typing like uh, um, you know you are in Pennsylvania, Westchester. Westchester is very close. <laughs> well, I am home in Midtown, right? I can walk to school. It takes only 20 minutes for me, but I am not going to school anytime soon. Um, so, uh, you know, I want to tell you that um, it is a difficult time for all of us, uh, but you have to study because, uh, as you see, the economy is hard, but when economy gets better, uh, you need a degree to get a job, 
right? Um, so, um, so you know, and, and I also want to share this. You are young. I know you are very young and healthy, but don't go outside, where, you know, to a crowded place because people like you will recover really quick. Uh, but, <laughs> but you also, you know, can can carry something to your mom or your grandma, right? Like, uh, so, uh, stay safe. Uh, and then uh, you can use your Wi-Fi to watch movies, you know, something uh, for fun. And I'm cooking three meals a day, you know, with my boy, as you can see in the background. <laughs> so it is difficult time, but I am here to help you uh, in any matter. So, uh, you know, it's a pleasure to see all of you. Uh, but if you don't have any more question, I want to finish it uh, now. Is it okay? I think it's, it's okay, right? Um, who's smoking? Huh? <laughs> <laughs> Anyhow, uh, so enjoy um, your day. And then email me if you have any question. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah, I'm afraid of the